Hey everyone, Matt Denham here, and I'm the offering manager for Cognos Analytics Dashboards. And today I'm going to run through an example of how you can compile and import a custom visualization into Cognos for use in your dashboards. As you're likely aware, Cognos Analytics has a number of out-of-the-box visualizations to help make your dashboards pop. However, we also support completely custom visualizations as well. So we can bring in content like high charts or Google charts, or if you author something in D3, we can bring that into Cognos and use that against trusted governed data. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now all of this stuff is documented, so I'm gonna make annotations about where you can find this information, but if you're a visual learner like I am, it's much easier to watch somebody walk through it. So that's what we're gonna do today, let's take a look. So the example that I'm gonna walk through today is this collision detection example. Uh, and I'll post a link to this, of course, in the comments. Um, it's kind of a, a cool packed bubble that uh, bounces around. Uh, certainly would be very neat to see uh, as a Cognos visualization against uh, trusted governed data. So what we're gonna need is just the provided script to, to bring this code into Cognos as a custom visualization. So that's what we're, where we will start. So I've got two terminals open because there's a couple of prerequisites that you need to do. One, you need to install NPM, you need to install Node.js, but you also have to install the custom visualization client tools um, at this link. It's included in, in every uh, install. So I'm gonna begin by uh, creating uh, what I would call the skeleton of what a custom viz uh, could look like. So once you've installed the client tools, that's uh, how this is possible. So I'm going to say custom viz create, and we'll call this collision underscore mat. Not very creative. Um, and now, as I said, it, it kind of creates this um, skeleton or framework of a custom visualization. So I'm going to I'm going to navigate into that directory, and I'm going to do that with both of my terminals. And what I'm gonna do is begin in my second terminal by actually creating the developer connection that becomes available so that I'll be able to test this in Cognos. So I'm gonna go custom viz start. And this is gonna tell me if I've uncovered any problems with my code or anything along the way. Once it's up and running on the listening port uh, as it is now, I'm good to go. So flipping back into my other terminal, my kind of work terminal, I'm going to navigate to the renderer folder and the primary file that we're looking to open is uh, main.ts. This is where we're gonna be doing the majority um, of our file transformations. So as I said, from the, from the base, we get kind of this framework from which to begin. Now the, the step one here is determining which version of D3 that we're using in this example. So in the code, um, it's very clearly identified as v, uh, version three. So that's what we're gonna use. So navigating back to my main.ts, I'm going to add a line of code that references that version number. And I'll do that here, right at the top. Again, we have this in our samples, in our documentation, um, and I'll post a link to that so you can go through the step-by-step -step as well. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to replace this entire line here with the code from this example. So everything that's kind of within the script parentheses. I'm going to copy this, all of this, and I'm going to paste it here. Now we're gonna make one last noticeable change, um, and that is we want this to render uh, within the node itself, not the body. So I'm just gonna do a quick search for body right here, and I'm gonna replace this line with code. Node, sorry, with node. All right, now if I kinda of go side by side a little bit, I'm going to do a save on my main.ts file. Let's see if I can kind of fit these both into the same section. Save this. We can see that it's going to start to build it. It finishes. There were no errors. So 
that is all very, very promising uh, for me to actually bring this in. So now if I flip back into Cognos, I'm going to say new dashboard. And it doesn't matter here um, which data source. I'm not actually going to pick a data source because all that I'm doing is bringing in a custom visualization as a test. So right as we've got all of these out-of-the-box visualizations, our custom visualizations are going to live in this panel. So I've got a couple of them that I've already been playing with, but we're going to bring in a test visualization. Now this should automatically understand that I've got, because I have my instance or server running, we can actually see this already um, as my test viz. So here I'm now in Cognos. Uh, because I'm running that, that instance, um, my custom visualization instance, I can now see this um, within Cognos, so this is a great start. Now, of course, it's kind of step one um, because I want to actually be able to map data to it. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm just going to remove this and flip back to my main.ts file. So in order to um, make use of the, the, the data mapping, that's the key thing that we want to change, right? So we want to add what we call in Cognos data slots. So I'm going to go up a directory here and I'm looking for this vizdef.xml. So I'm going to say open viz. Can spell it right and we're gonna want to add some slot mapping uh, information here so I've got some sample code that I'm gonna paste in um, again this is samples that we have already included um, so link to the documentation of course will will certainly be provided but this is gonna allow me to add um, a support for my my color palette uh, and B, I'm going to add both a category and measure slot um, so that I can map data that corresponds with, um, you know, the volume and, and size uh, of my, my different bubbles in this example. So I'll just save this and close it. And now we're going to need to account for some of these uh, changes in my, my main.ts, as you can uh, I'm sure tell uh, this is kind of our main area of what we're looking to to modify. So to to make use of the uh, the data sets and the slots and everything else, the palette, um, I'm actually going to now update this very first line with another sample. Uh, as I said, documentation you can pull that in. Um, and now we want to make some really obvious changes. We're going to declare some constants here. Um, I'll just put these in again towards the top just means of setting max height size and, and other things and now we're going to look to actually reference those um, across the across the um, visualization itself so I'm going to make some changes to the create section here to account for those um, variables that we declared um, referencing the height and width and, and everything else we also have to uh, create a section to account for if there is no data, right? If, uh, if, if the chart happens to be empty because based on um, set of filtering or something else, um, if there is no data, we, don't, we have to account for how that would be rendered. So we have a code snippet for that also. And now finally, there are some other, um, what I would say, general cleanup that we would need to do. Um, and again, all of this is certainly um, available in our documentation. So I'm just going to replace that um, a little bit of formatting changes here and there. Um, so you can kind of check out what the, the completed version is uh, online as well. Um, but everything is certainly there. And so again, as I do a save, we get the, uh, the finished building. I'm going to uh, flip back. And actually, you know what, the, the next step is once I've kind of got my finished version of what it looks like, I'm going to stop this terminal here, um, my live instance, because I don't need a dev instance for testing anymore. 
So it's uh, control C to kill that. And then what we want to do is pack up this completed custom visualization um, that we would then upload to Cognos so that it could be used over and over again. So to do that, the line that we use here is custom viz pack. And that's going to package everything up that's in this directory of collision underscore mat. Uh, and then that's what I'm going to upload into Cognos. So I can do that directly here again from the custom visualization page. I'm going to go add, and I can do this as an administrator as well. Um, and I'll go into the location of where I packed that just now. Say open. Now I've got this. I can just strictly drag and drop this into my canvas. Now is when I'm going to want to pick a data source. So here I've got a data module that, uh, that has my source information. And I'll just use um, province or state as my category. And it doesn't really matter, quantity sold as my size. And just like that, I've got my custom visualization added to my canvas. I can do things like uh, change the, the palette if I wanted to do that. Um, I can certainly turn off and on the legend and, and other elements. All of these things, of course, would have to be taken into consideration um, during the build. We don't have all of the code for that um, as samples, but um, you know, you would want to define which properties that you wanted to control and and um, other elements that you may or may not want to change. But um, at its core, this is how you can quickly and easily bring in a D3 example um, into Cognos for use in dashboards. Thanks everybody. I'm hoping this um, adds a little bit of clarity and makes it a little bit easier for the when you want to bring in your own custom visualizations to play with. Thanks again.